Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have an amazing update for The Mandalorian Season 3, we're also going to be talking about a character update for The Book of Boba and more. As always my dear friends before we dive into it, please be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted every single time I post a new video. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's talk about the news. So we're going to start with an amazing update for The Mandalorian Season season 3, the Hollywood strike has been averted and a deal has finally been reached. The IATSC were able to successfully negotiate with the AMPTP, which basically means that production for numerous shows in Hollywood, including The Mandalorian Season 3, will not be affected, and the show will continue filming without any delays. It's been a bumpy ride over the last few weeks concerning this potential strike, and for a few days it was looking like it was going ahead. This would have meant that production for The Mandalorian would have come to a complete stop, inevitably delaying the release release date by a few months at the very least. But thankfully, an agreement was made in regards to the workers' contracts, and as I've stated in the past, I stand with those workers who are essential to the production of the shows and movies that we all love. From the makeup artists to the editors, the camera operators, and so many more roles, they make the magic happen behind the scenes. Thankfully for us Mandalorian fans, this has been averted and they've come to an agreement. So the upcoming Lucasfilm projects, which have just begun production or are about to go into production, are going ahead according to schedule. So while there was speculation that The Mandalorian Season 3 would be delayed by up to a whole year, it looks as though we're still set for an October 2022 release date. Everything's fine again, it's all good. Everything's under control, situation normal. So what an incredible year we're in for in 2022, and apart from the Disney Plus shows, at the end of May, Star Wars Celebration is back in Anaheim. The dates were moved from August the 18th to May the 26th to the 29th. I would imagine that Lucasfilm is saving some big announcements and reveals for that weekend. Before then though, we have Disney Plus Day in just under three weeks. And while we should be getting the Book of Boba Fett trailer and maybe even a first look at other shows like Andor and Obi-Wan Kenobi, they're probably saving the big announcements and show reels for Star Wars Celebration. We can't fathom just how massive next year is going to be for Star Wars. As I've said, it may not be the golden age of Star Wars, but it definitely is the Beskar age. Now speaking of Disney Plus Day on November 12th, one thing I do hope we get is a cast announcement for Star Wars Ahsoka. We learned from Deadline that they were casting the main actors back in early spring of this year, so by next month it's a small possibility but a chance nonetheless that we could find out who's playing who in the Ahsoka series. And apart from the obvious Rosario Dawson, Mena Masood and Lars Mikkelsen, we could find out who they cast as Sabine Wren. So that covers that news and now my dear friends we're going to be talking about a character update for The Mandalorian. Bill Burr, who plays Miggs Mayfeld, recently did an interview with Dan Patrick and he was asked if he's going to play Miggs in the future. All Bill said is that he really hopes so, but he doesn't know for sure. Now while this question was in reference to future Mandalorian seasons, he is rumoured to be in the Book of Boba Fett. LRM Online were pretty firm about the fact that we would see him and other Mandalorian characters this December in the Book of Boba. I would love to see more Miggs as soon as the Book of Boba Fett because I really enjoyed his character in the first two seasons of The Mandalorian. In The Mandalorian Season 2 in particular, not only did he give a very impressive emotional performance in an episode that was full of political and philosophical undertones, but his character also brought a lot of well-placed comedy to the series as well. While I much preferred his character in Season 2, the grittier side to Mayfeld that we saw in Season 1 would definitely work really well in a show like The Book of Boba. The last we saw of Bill's character was when Cara Dune freed him for his valuable help, and he voluntarily remained on Morak. If Bo Boba and Fennec Shand return to that planet in the Book of Boba Fett, they already have one ally who resides there. Assuming, of course, he did remain on that world. While we don't know what happened to Miggs following Chapter 15, I'm sure we're going to find out soon enough in the Book of Boba Fett or The Mandalorian Season 3, depending on where he next appears. So finally, my dear friends, we're going to be talking about War of the Bounty Hunters. I speak about it now and then on the channel, and a few of you have told me that you really enjoy it when I cover them. Either because you don't follow the comics yourself, or you like the quick recap format. But either way, I hear you my dear friends, and so once again I'm going to be talking about them, and we do have a new development. Today we'll be talking about when exactly Leia found out about Kira and Han Solo. War of the Bounty Hunters issue number 5 proves just how little Leia knew about Han Solo and his past. In the final issue of War of the Bounty Hunters by Charles Saul, Leia, Lando and Chewie come within arm's length of frozen Han Solo, only to lose him again to Boba Fett. However, along the way, Leia learns about Han's former lover, 
Crimson Dawn's boss, Kira. And that could be very significant to the larger Star Wars universe going forward. The limited series began just after The Empire Strikes Back and details Han Solo's eventual journey from Bespin to Jabba's palace on Tatooine. He is stolen from Boba Fett by Kira and a resurgent Crimson Dawn and placed on auction for the galaxy's underworld to bid on. All the while, Leia Lando and Chewie are desperately trying to rescue Han while Boba Fett is still trying to finish his job. As issue number four ended, an Imperial shuttle is transporting Solo from the auction to Vader's Super Star Destroyer. Lobot, who is on the Millennium Falcon, disables the shuttle with his cybernetic implant but Boba Fett disables the Falcon with a seismic charge. Meanwhile, Boku the Hutt, a rogue secret member of Crimson Dawn, decides that it's a good idea to reclaim Solo by attacking the Imperials. While Leia is communicating with Luke, who is busy in a dogfight with Vader, the Imperial shuttle drifts out of Lobot's range and regains power. As it goes and docks in the Executor, it seems like Leia and company are out of options when they receive a mysterious message from the Star Destroyer, and it grants them access to land and Board. Naturally, and the way Star Wars goes, Leia thinks it's a trap. But the message continues, if you're doubting that this offer is made in good faith, note that the true sender of this message once stood where you do now, watching with bated breath as the finest pilot in the galaxy made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. That message, of course, identifies the speaker as Kira. Leia, whose only interaction with Kira has been how the Crimson Dawn leader stole Han and put him up for auction, is baffled when Lando says that Kira is helping them for some reason. Naturally, Leia won't leave it there and demands an explanation. To that, Lando responds by stumbling over his words. However, he finally gets the point across that Han Solo and Kira were at one point romantically involved. For now, Leia shrugs off the revelation and takes advantage of the offer to board the Executor. Not much else is said in the comics about how Leia feels about Han having had relations with Kira, but it does prove just how little Leia knew about Han Solo. As the issue ends, concluding War of the Bounty Hunters, Leia fails to reclaim her future husband, but she does so soon enough in Return of the Jedi. Now, because War of the Bounty Hunters tells us a lot about what happened between episodes 5 and 6. A lot of fans, including myself, seem to think that this is going to be a prelude to the Book of Boba Fett, especially if the show is going to have a lot of flashbacks. And one point of contention has been, are we going to see Kira and Crimson Dawn in the series? We know that she's getting a spin-off comic series of War of the Bounty Hunters and it's going to be called Crimson Rain. But I wonder if they're going to bring that in in the Book of Boba. And moreover, could we see Han Solo and Leia in the series as well? The lads over at Chatter Tatooine definitely seemed to think so when they reported the rumour that we are going to get Han Solo, Luke Skywalker and Leia this December. Time will tell, but I hope they're right. But otherwise, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this news update. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are, and also why not consider becoming a patron? The link is down there in the description and you get exclusive videos not found here on YouTube. But otherwise, my dear friends, I will see you in the next one. I'm Star Wars Meg and I'm wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. May the force be with you and I'll see you tomorrow. My dear friends, the holiday season is upon us. Christmas and subsequently the Book of Boba Fett are drawing near. And this year I'm feeling pretty festive. So right now I'm in the process of setting up a new merch store and there are going to be plenty of Star Wars Christmassy designs to choose from. And also along the same lines over the next few weeks, I'm going to be posting more wintry mixes over on my second channel, Meg's Cantina. 